In Creo Simulate, you have three different convergence methods for solving an analysis. Let's take a look at the differences between them. Before I can show you what they are, I have to set up a basic analysis. I am in structure mode. One thing that is required are constraints. And so I'm going to select this bottom cylindrical surface to be fixed in translations. Note that there are rotations that are set to be free because rotational displacement constraints have no meaning for a three-dimensional model. I will click OK. And then for my loads, let's create a force moment load on this cylindrical surface. And using my world coordinate system, we're going to have the force be upward with a value of 200. And if I don't want to use Newtons, I can change this to pounds force. And also in the X direction, let's add in value of 100 pounds force. I will click OK. And I need to assign a material to my model. Before I do the material assignment, though, I'm going to make a tweak to the available materials. I'll go to my materials, and here we have the granted database that was provided in Creo Parametric 4.0. Let's go to the ferrous metals, and I'll use a high carbon steel, and I'm going to select it, and I could add it to the model, or I could use the pencil icon before I do that in order to edit the properties. And I highly recommend that you use a failure criterion in order to give easier to understand results to other people. Since this is a ductile metal, I will use the distortion energy or von Mises criterion. And that requires you to enter in the tensile yield stress. For the steel, it's going to be a value of 250. This is good. Let me save this. I'm just going to save it out to my standard working directory. and might as well set up uh, a folder for that. So new folder and use materials. Later on, I can set a config.pro option to use this. And let's click OK. And now let's navigate to that particular folder. See Creo materials. And that way I can add this to the model. Yes, I'll allow it to be consistent with the model units and then click OK. And then with my material assignment in this dialog box, we can see that it's got the material listed in here and I can click OK. All right, everything is set up in order to allow me to perform a static analysis. Let's go to the analyses and studies dialog box. Right now we don't have any studies in this model. If I go to the file menu, I can choose to create a new static analysis and I'm going to give it a name. Let's call it rod static. I highly recommend that you write a very good description in here because typically when I've been performing structural analyses, I'm tweaking the model, tweaking the loads, tweaking the constraints, making changes as I go through here. And then later on, a few days or a few weeks later, I'll go back and see all these different runs that I did and have no idea what exactly I was looking for in that particular analysis. So write yourself a good description. We have some nonlinear options. We have inertia relief if you're doing a modal analysis without any constraints. Here we can combine constraint sets, but I only have one. Here's my load set. And down here on the convergence tab, this is where we have the three different methods. Let me explain them from least simple to more complex. Here's one called quick check. I never use quick check. The way that quick check works is that it is going to run your analysis with all your elements at a polynomial order of three. The way that Creo Simulate works is different than traditional finite element analysis. Traditional FEA uses what are called H-type elements. And in order to get more accurate results with H-type elements, you put more of them in your model. You use smaller elements. With Creo Simulate, you're using something that's called GEA, which is for short for Geometric Element Analysis. And the way that GEA works is by using what are called P-type elements. And that P stands for polynomial. 
you're going to have a mesh that is much cruder than what you would expect with traditional FEA. And the way that you get better results is that it increases the polynomial order of the shape function that describes the displacement along the element edges. What quick check does is that it runs all your elements at a polynomial order of three and then kicks out the results. The results from quick check are not good at all. Quick check is when you are trying to debug your model for analysis just to see that it will run. And I really find no reason whatsoever to use quick check. By the way, to show you how the mesh would look, let's click the OK button out of here. Oops, forgot that you can't use dashes, need to use an underscore. Let's click the OK button out of here. And I'm going to not run it at this point. I just want to show you what a mesh will look like in Creo Simulate. If I go to refine model, here we have the auto gem command. That's for the automatic geometric element mesher. And we'll click the create button over here. And you'll see from the summary dialog box in the image on the screen, this is what a mesh in Creo Simulate looks like. And for a lot of people who come from ANSYS or NASTRAN or Abacus who are used to traditional FEA, they look at this mesh and say, wow, that's crazy. There's no way that this mesh is correct. And in the dialog box, we can see that this entire model will be run with only 811 elements and 286 nodes. All right, let's close out of these different dialog boxes. No, I don't need to save the mesh. And let's go back to our home tab and the analyses and studies dialog box. And I'm going to edit the analysis that I already started. From the method drop down list, we already talked about quick check. The next option that you have here is single pass adaptive. And single pass adaptive will get you pretty good results. The way that single pass adaptive works is that it's going to run all your elements at a polynomial order of three, just like with quick check, and it's gonna run it using two different methods. One method is called the single element stress method. The other method is called the super converged method. And it'll compare the results that it gets from each of the methods, single element versus super converged. And based on the differences that it gets in the results on the different elements, it's going to come up with what's called a stress error estimate. And based on the stress error estimate, it's going to increase the polynomial order of those different edges to four or five or six or seven or eight or nine, depending on the amount of the error. And after it increases that polynomial order at one time, it's going to run the model again and then spit out the results. That's what it means by single pass. It runs it once, changes the polynomial order, and then runs the single pass after that. And when you choose single pass adaptive, you'll notice that all the different options in here are grayed out. There's this one advanced control, but I'm not going to go into it in this video. And single pass adaptive results are usually within about 10% of the results that you get from multi pass adaptive. And single pass adaptive runs really quickly because it's only doing two runs over the model, that polynomial order of three, and then an increased polynomial order for some or all of the element edges. And so this is really good when you're just trying to get quick results out, when you're trying to make sure that your model is running correctly, and you want to make sure that your results are within a rough order of magnitude of where they should be. And once you've got everything working right, then you're going to set up the multi-pass adaptive. And with multi-pass adaptive, you've got a lot more controls in here. First, you can specify the minimum and maximum polynomial orders from a minimum value of one to a maximum order polynomial order of nine. In this case here, it's set from one to six. Now, what I usually do is I'm gonna guess that all the elements are gonna be a polynomial order higher than one. I usually jump up to a starting polynomial order of three, and then I set the max polynomial order to a value of nine. The second control that you have for multi-pass adaptive is the percent convergence. 
and your model's going to be considered converged when the difference in results between one pass and another pass is within 10% of the value by default. But a lot of times I'll start off with 5% convergence. If you need really, really good results, you might set that to 2% or 1%, but the lower the value that you have for the percent of convergence, the more likely you're going to end up in a situation where your model does not converge. So you just don't want to make this arbitrarily a low number. It depends on the quality of the results that you are trying to get. And in addition to your percent of convergence, you can choose what you're converging on. By default, it's going to use your local displacements, local strain energy, and global RMS, root mean square stresses, or you could choose just local displacement and local strain energy, or a custom measure that you've created. Maybe you're interested in the displacement at a certain particular location. But I usually leave the default of local displacement, local strain energy, and the global stresses. And with that, our model will be set up in order to run. A few other different things that you have on here from the output tab. By default, it calculates and outputs the stresses, rotations, and reactions. You can turn on the local stress errors if you needed to do some really deep checking into the quality of your results. And also you have this plotting grid. And the plotting grid refers to the number of locations that results are going to be generated on each element face. And so with a plotting grid of four, the way that it calculates the number of locations on each element face is it's the plotting grid plus one squared. So four plus one is five, five squared is 25. So that means on each element face, it's going to give you 25 results. If you are using tetrahedra, which look like pyramids, those have four sides. So you'll be getting 100 results on each element face. If you're using elements like bricks, which have six sides, you're gonna get 150 elements per side. If I have a really, really complicated model, I might actually dumb this down to a plotting grid of three if I really don't need all those results because for a really complicated model and a very high plotting grid, you could actually fail to run. And there's also this excluded elements tab. You could choose to exclude elements if, for example, you had some singularity in your model and you didn't want it to interfere with the successful run of the model. But that is how you set up your different convergence methods in here. And then you can click OK. And another thing to mention for setting up these analyses to run, here I've got the analysis set. This button allows you to configure the run settings. You can also get to it by going to the run drop down menu and choosing settings. And here in this dialog box, you can specify if you want to, uh, where you want your files to go that are output from the analysis. Really the most important thing that you want in here is the memory allocation. This is how much memory is allocated to the solver. The default value has not changed in decades. Uh, it's always been this 512 megabytes, which is really, really low, especially if you've got a 32 gig or 64 gig computer. You want to crank this up. The old school recommendation was half of your available RAM, but really that doesn't apply anymore. Uh, that's way too much RAM to allocate. And so I usually start off with a value of 8 gigabytes or 8192 in here, and then I will click OK. And then I could run the analysis. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to run the analysis. I do want to show you how you can change that value permanently. If I go to File, Options, and then Configuration Editor, you can search for different config options. And I know that anything that has, or excuse me, if I use Sim, that'll come up with a lot of the different simulation related results. Here you can see a bunch of the ones for Sim Display. Here we have some fatigue analysis ones. Scroll down some more. Uh, PP, I believe that's for post processing. Uh, let's scroll down. Here's the one that I'm interested in. Sim solver memory allocation. 
If I don't want to change that every time that I set up an analysis, I can change that in my config.profile. And here it is. If I scroll down over here, I should be able to see it somewhere. There, 8192. And I want to be sure to export that so that it is saved in my personal config.profile so that it's read in every time that I launch Creole Parametric. So that is how you can choose between the different kinds of convergence methods when you're using geometric element analysis in Creo Simulate. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.